You are an ass. You are an ass. Where? He is there. There is the ass. Hey everyone, welcome to Princess Gay, I'm your host Connie, and today we are here with a first impression showdown. It's been a little while since we've actually had a showdown, I believe. Um, oh wait, no, no, I think we had, <laughs> I think we had one last month. <laughs> um, but it was only two shows, and we're only doing two shows this time as well. And I think it's pretty clear what one of them is. Um, yeah, we are doing the Spice and Wolf remake. Uh, Spice and Wolf Merchant Meets the Wise Wolf, um, which is quite a title, but nonetheless, I'm excited, and we'll talk more about that in a second, but we're also doing Kaiju number eight. This is a series that has been, like, waited on for quite a while. There, there was, like, I think there was, like, news that it was supposed to, like, come out last year, but it was, like, pushed back or something. Um... But yeah, either way, I, I'm interested to check that out as well. To see what uh, kind of the hype surrounding its eventual debut would be. And it just came out. And so I'm I'm interested. Because I haven't heard much about it um, since it came out. Like, I haven't heard what people have thought about it, But I've seen that other people have been reacting to it. And it's been, you know, hyped up in the lead up at least. So, let's talk about this. So, we'll start with Spice and Wolf. I have seen the original Spice and Wolf. Um, obviously, otherwise, kind of, why would I have a plush for Holo, the Wise Wolf? <laughs> but, I've seen it a few times. And, I... I really enjoy it. It's not like the best anime out there, but it, it's one of those anime that's just super enjoyable, super memorable, is a bit of a comfort show, and is very unique as well, because it's, it's in a fantasy setting, which is not unique. That's pretty common for a lot of anime, but it's also about economics. And I can only think of one other anime that is about economics. I'm not talking about just features it in there, but I'm, like, talking actually about it. And the other series is C. Uh, the... I'm trying... I'm gonna try to get this... The order of these words correct. It's C, the money of soul and possibility control. I believe that's what it... How it, how it goes. It's, a, it's another long title, but uh, a lot of people, for short, just call it Sea Control. It's a really fun uh, series that uses um, economics for, like, these kind of almost JoJo stand-like battles. <laughs> um, it's really unique and interesting. Um, I also have it on Blu-ray and DVD because I got it for Christmas this past year. <laughs> But yeah, um, interesting, the, two, the only two economic-focused anime I know about, I have seen and really enjoy. <laughs> but this is a remake of Spice and Wolf that I believe is set to actually, like, follow the manga more accurately and go past where the original series went. Because the original series had two seasons— and then it just stopped. It never continued. It never got a third season. And there was more to the story. And so I believe that this is set to continue past the point where season two ended. And I don't know if this is going to be a seasonal. I don't know if this is going to be a continuing thing. But I am wondering if it will break the streak of... Um, <laughs> remake reactions on this channel we've reacted to a few anime remakes and we have literally dropped all of them and for different reasons mind you um some of it comes down to oh it's just way too similar to the original to the point where it just doesn't feel like necessary um 
then there was like the case of like the Digimon Adventure remake where it's like, okay, this is very different, but at a, after a certain point, it just starts going downhill and just, it's like, this isn't interesting anymore. <laughs> the Shaman King remake where it's like, okay, I, I just have kind of lost interest in reacting to this and everything, um, and so on and so forth. There is even the Higurashi remake, which didn't end up being a remake. But the problem is, way too much of the early stuff was still part, was basically just a remake. And it, it just, it, it, it made me lose interest before, like, the actual big change-ups happened. And it, so it's like, every single time we have done a, a, a remake series on this channel... I've dropped it. So I think that doing this as a first impression is a smarter idea. Let's not like give instant big hopes to it, but we're going to do it as a first impression, check it out, see how much, I, what I think of it at that point. And that way, even if we do continue it and then drop it somewhere down the line, it won't be as harsh because continuing it in the first place is literally just based off the first episode so uh but then we have kaiju number eight and i know almost nothing about this series all i know is that kaijus are involved and the main character fights them i also know that the main character is like 30 something um, I don't know why that's relevant, but I did see that on Twitter, and it's like, oh, uh, okay, why, why is, why are people making a deal out of that? W what, is it just because he's not, like, your typical, like, 17 to 25-year-old protagonist? It's like, I, I don't really see the big deal out of that, <laughs> but okay. Um, he's not as young as other protagonists in a shonen series i guess I, I guess that's the big thing but yeah um I'm, I'm definitely interested in checking that out now we are doing both of these in dub and let me explain why uh i'll start with actually kaiju number eight we're doing the dub for this because of one voice actor i heard that um Oh, God, what is his name? Oh, I am blanking on his name. I had his name. I had his name memorized. And I normally do anyway. But now I'm just forgetting his name. It's just escaping me. I'm going to have to look this up. Um, wait just a second. Adam MacArthur. I don't know why I completely blanked on his name there. But Adam MacArthur is in this. And I really like Adam MacArthur's voicing performances. Um, he is great in Star vs. the Force of Evil. He, despite where I think that series went, Adam MacArthur's voice performance as Marco Diaz is fantastic. And he is just blowing people away, myself included, with his vocal performance as Yuji Itadori in Jujutsu Kaisen and so now he's gonna be in this and I don't know who else is in this but I'm very interested in watching this just for him um all I know is I know he's not the main character but I know he's a major character like he's a, he's gonna be in there he's just not the main main guy um but yeah it's like it, it almost feels weird to choose to watch a dub specifically for one voice actor, but sometimes it's just like, I want to see more of what he can do, you know? And we're watching the dub for Spice and Wolf because that is the correct way to watch Spice and Wolf, um, whether it's with the original series or the new one. Because there is no better craft Lawrence than J. Michael Tatum, and there is no other person who can voice Holo the Wise Wolf besides Brina Palencia. And both of them are back for the dub of this new series. Um, both VAs were brought back, and that that alone is like 
it, it guarantees I have to watch the dub. Like, there again, there's no other proper way to watch this at this point. I have to watch this in dub. And to be fair, I watched the original in dub. And I've, he I've heard the sub, but it's just, it's not the same. Especially when I believe the characters canonically speak English. <laughs> it's one of those shows that is set in Europe. So it's like these characters are speaking English. Even if it's like technically like an old English, but still. They're speaking like, I guess you could say the Queen's English. <laughs> Um, and it just, it feels more natural. Plus, again, the performances are just perfection. J. Michael Tatum's known for his quality voice acting. Um, he's done so many amazing roles. Um, and Brina Palencia, I, I would put right up there with him. And again, like, she made this role. Like, I can't imagine Hole of the Wise Wolf with, 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 with any other voice. Like I said, I've seen some of the original uh, Japanese, and it just it doesn't work as well, in my opinion. The Japanese voice just doesn't fit the character as well as Brina Palencia does. So I'm very excited for this. I I'm so hyped that they got the voices back. And by the way, this was just announced, like, yesterday, the same day that the dub started. It's like, oh, hey, the dub is starting today. By the way, we got the same voices back from the original series. It's just like, oh, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> the funny thing is I was actually hoping that there would be a dub for this, whether they got the same voices back or not. Um, and, and I was waiting for the dub because the series has been out for a few weeks. There's like three or four episodes out of this. I was waiting for the dub before I would even consider checking it out. And so that just happened to come upon, and it's like, yep, we're watching this. <laughs> we're reacting to this. So, yeah. Um, and I, I'm going to also just say here, it's like, if you, like, are a sub-purist and don't like dubbed anime, don't watch. It's like, if, if don't, don't pitch a fit, don't complain, don't bitch and moan. And don't watch. That's all you have to do. I am not a sub purist. I think that some anime are better in dub. And some are on equal terms between the dub and the sub. And I am not going to put up for on this channel people putting down people who prefer the dub for any reason. Because it's not always just sometimes people liking it more. Sometimes people cannot read along with subtitles fast enough for various reasons and we have no right to put someone down for that some people watch the dub also because maybe they watch while working out and it's just easier if they're when they're not always looking at the screen at every single second it's like just no matter what the reason it doesn't matter we shouldn't put people down for that and we shouldn't put the the voice actors and the directors and everyone else down for all the work they do to bring these dubs to us. It's like people need to just stop being assholes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you're new to the channel, though, I, you probably want an explanation of what all of this is. So if you're new to the channel and haven't checked it out before, a first impression is... As it sounds, I'm giving a series a first impression and determining if I want to continue reacting to it in the future. Because after we watch these first episodes today, there's going to be one of three choices made for each one. Either I continue reacting to it in the future, or I watch it on my own time, or I just don't like it and I drop it. Um, so it's one of those three options. Both of them will be ranked on their own shit. Um... And we'll determine. If I continue reacting to them in the future, it's not necessarily going to be right away. It's going to be whenever I can get to it. It's basically going to be put on a list. And then when I have an open spot, um, I choose like, oh, what from my list do I want to get to the most next? 
and so that's what I go with. And so it, it might be on the list for a bit, it might be on the list for a short amount of time. It A lot of it depends on how much I really enjoyed this first episode and how much I want to continue it. So how quickly I want to continue it too. So we'll see. But yeah, that is how these first impressions go. Uh, first impressions showdown specifically just means I'm doing more than one series in a video. Um, and as this will go, in the description where there is the link to the reaction, there will be two separate links for each different series. Um, just to make it easier so you only have to watch the one that you're here for, or if you want to watch both, you can still watch them um, at your leisure and stuff. Uh, the Afterthoughts will also be split into two separate sections that uh, will have different chapters uh, with the timestamps and everything. So you can also go to whatever you want to watch at any point. But there is a lot to watch on this channel besides just these. Uh, every weekday, we do reactions to two separate shows a day, Monday through Friday. On Mondays, we also do YouTube reactions. These are mostly donation rewards that people have sent in for the channel. Wednesdays, we have um, gaming content currently, and we are getting through streams of Momodora Moonlit Farewell. Um, but once that finishes, we're probably going to be moving on to PS5 stuff, so look forward to that. Um, we also have movie reactions posted every Saturday and Sunday, though I do record them during the week. And just various other videos that appear, uh, that uh, show up sometimes, uh, from AMVs to countdown lists, just whenever I can get to them. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot to check out. I hope that uh, you find something you can enjoy, because there's always something for everyone. The um, schedule is changing and shifting around enough to where with the variety of stuff we react to, there's always something that anyone can be interested in. Uh, but that being said, let us get this going and hope for the best. So when the screen fades to black, pause this reaction or pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the links to their separate reactions. And after you watch one or both of them, whichever you might be interested in, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after this fades to black and then fades back in, everything for that point forward will be my afterthoughts, split into sections depending on the series we are reacting, whichever series we're reacting to at the time. Yeah. Um, and will contain spoilers to these first episodes. So, all of that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reactions. And we are back, and we'll begin with the Spice and Wolf uh, portion of these afterthoughts uh, with spoilers in three, two, one, now. So, this is mostly what I remember from the original. Um, it, it's not all I remember, of course, but <laughs> I'm just saying it's like it, it seems to be like very similar to the original, though that that cold open with Holo uh, telling this as uh, the, the series as a story to, I presume, her and Lawrence's daughter is a nice touch. It, it, it's a nice touch, and it definitely implies that this is going to go further than the original, because it never got to that point in the original. Well, and, and I only knew that they eventually did have a daughter and everything because, you know people talked about it after this after the original series just stopped and I, and I had heard about that 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 was kind of the big thing I had heard about uh, people talking about as to how much further it goes um so so there's still a lot that I'm I you could say I'm blind on in regards to that anything after the events of uh, season two of the original series. But like I said in the reaction, there's going to be a lot that I just don't remember. There's going to be a lot that just I need to get reacquainted with. Because it's been quite a while. Um, when did this series come out? Let me check real quick. The original series, I should say. 
should be uh, easy. Uh, way to find out here. 2008. So, well, like a decade and a half ago, the original series came out in 2008 um, and it aired for two seasons. And so, yeah, it's it's been quite a while. I want to say the last time I, I would have seen it would have been like probably just out of high school. No, it would have been a little later than that because I graduated in 2011. I want to say it was probably 2014 then. 2014, 2015. Somewhere in that range, it, it would have been the last time I've seen it. Um, and I had seen it a couple times before that. Um, Spice and Wolf was honestly one of the first anime that I really, like, really started to get into. Because there was a lot of anime I watched before then. Um, mostly the standard stuff. Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Pokemon, Digimon. But it's like... It was around 2014 that I really started to watch, like really started to delve into a lot of stuff. It, it, it was around that time that I, 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 it started becoming more of like an, a thing for me. But prior to that, it's like, oh, I would watch an occasional series here and there. Um, but nothing like constant. You know what I mean? It, it was just like, oh, every now and again, I would watch a little bit of something. My sister, uh, when we were down in Georgia um, from like 2009 to 2011, something like that, um, we would watch some things together. Like we watched Rosario Vampire. We watched Ranma One Half and, and a couple other things. But again, I was never like consistently actively watching anime until about 2014. And I started watching seasonal stuff. I started watching a lot of older stuff that I had never checked out. And um, Spice and Wolf was one I had actually watched prior to that. Um, I believe I watched Spice and Wolf for the first time while I was at college, which would have been 2010, 2011. Um, no, 2011, 2012, sorry. <laughs> I graduated high school in 2011. What am I talking about? <laughs> I was thinking of high school again for some reason. No, it would have been like the end of 2011 into the beginning uh, half of 2012 while I was at uh, a, a specific college that I went to. And I had checked out a couple anime while I was there because I had friends uh, in the dorms and stuff who were into anime. And uh, I also found a lot of video game stuff during that time period as well. Um, it's it's where I played Skyrim for the first time, for example. <laughs> but yeah, I, I checked out a lot of anime for the first time there, and one of them was Spice and Wolf. Um, and so I I saw that there, and I watched it like a couple times since. But I, the last time would have been like somewhere between 2014 and 2016, I would say. Um, so it's been years, um, but I've always held a very fond, uh, appreciation of, and I've seen clips here and there all the time. Um, and, and I got this plush, I think I got this at Yomacon. Um, I got it at some convention, um, because it's, it's just super cute. <laughs> it's just a super cute holo plush. Um, but yeah, and... I, I'm telling this entire story at the beginning of these afterthoughts here because I want to tell you that it's like I have a history with this series. I have uh, known this series pretty well and watched it multiple times. But like I said, it's been a while because I just have watched a lot of other stuff and hadn't come back to this one again um and now i get to come back to it but with a new um series a, a a remake and again like i said it seems like it's mostly the same at least for now and i don't know like exactly how accurate the original series was to the manga but i assume this is gonna be like i guess you could say a brotherhood treatment 
Um, and I think that even though I do know a good amount of stuff, the fact that I don't remember everything, like all these details on everything that happens and whatnot, I think is going to make this doable. Plus, there's also the aspect of the fact that this this series is definitely what I would call kind of the epitome of a comfort series. Like I've talked about comfort shows on this channel before, just uh, shows whether anime or not, that just feel like a warm hug whenever you watch them. They feel just so comforting and wholesome and likable. And just everything about, like, viewing them makes you just feel so safe and happy and, well, comforted. And it, it's the same vibe like you get from, like, a comfort character, but just with a whole series. <laughs> and, and this is definitely that kind of series for me. The original definitely kind of had that vibe, too, but, like, watching this, like, now in 2024, like possibly a decade after I have seen this last um and seeing it with like the new animation um updated style and everything the new music and everything but the same voices it's just like I, I feel like I I'm the one wrapped up in those uh those warm furs you know I feel like I'm the one who's feeling that warm comfiness because it's just it's just that kind of series and from what i remember it do, there are a couple points that actually do get a little more intense but it never like really sh it, it never really stops being this kind of show it sticks mostly to being very comfy it just, there are a couple points that get a little more intense than what you would see here. Um, yeah, and I think it's interesting also that they didn't show Holo's, like, full wolf form here. They only, like, kind of hinted at it. I don't remember if they showed it yet at this point in the original series. I just, that's one thing I just don't remember. Um, though it is in the opening of both the original and this one so to be fair i wonder if you played the original opening theme over the new opening visuals if that would actually match up that would be really cool if it did um but yeah i really uh i, I really enjoyed this like i said it was very comforting it, it felt very nice to hear these voices again obviously j michael tatum does a very similar voice for almost all his characters with some exceptions here like you can hear like his uh tenya ida voice from my hero academia in this and um isaac dian from bakano and stuff um and, and i think that's just mostly just his voice but he he the way he speaks the the way he says it is different depending on what the character requires like Ida being very straight-laced and serious, Lawrence being very chill and down-to-earth, uh, you have Isaac Dean being very high-energy and wacky, um, just going off of these examples still. So it's like, or hell, I mean, Scar from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, I, I mentioned Brotherhood before, you, you can't, like, ignore Scar, like, that's a very different performance for him, he's a, he's a, lot more intense and gruff and you know down on himself and everything because of what the character requires y you can't forget scar <laughs> and of course brina palencia is amazing as always she just like slipped right back into this role it's like that's that's just holo that's just holo and it's it's so good it's so good because it's like again it, i i actively remember these characters i actively remember these voices it's like this might have been one of the first places i knowingly heard um j michael tatum in it might be 
and it's like that that also adds a little extra level of nostalgia to that too and he's also a great guy by the way uh, I, I met him at Yomacon um I have not met Brina Palencia I wish that would be cool <laughs> but no have not met her but yeah it's like this is just this is just a good comforting show and I think I'm gonna really enjoy this um so yes if it's not clear I definitely am gonna be continuing to react to this but this is one that I, I think I'm gonna wait until like I need something like this right now I think I'm good with what we have and everything but if if it comes up in the near future where it's like oh I could just use a good comfort show right now I think that would be a good time to really get to this um, and believe me, there are times where that will, that does come up. <laughs> there are plenty of times where I just need a good comfort show. And comfort shows can come in like many different uh, styles and all too. It just depends on the person, depends on what is going to be comforting to you in the in, in, at that time and stuff. Um, but it, it'll definitely come up uh, before you know it. I I I believe that. <laughs> Um, but that also gives it enough time for some more episodes to get dubbed and everything, too. Because only the first episode is dubbed right now. Um, it just started. Which is pretty normal. I mean, three episodes out for the sub, uh, that's about a normal time when the dub starts airing. So, yeah. I'm so excited that the same VAs are back, though. I'm so excited that it's it just captures that same spirit with new additions, new music. It's just, it's so good. It's so good. And I, I'm definitely excited to see more in the near future. Uh, but tell me your thoughts on this first episode of Spice and Wolf Merchant Meets the Wise Wolf. I'll probably just call it Spice and Wolf 2024. Um, but tell me your thoughts down in the comments below and uh if this is the only uh one of these two you're here for hope you enjoyed uh but we still have to get to kaiju number eight so yeah thank you all for tuning in and at least for this portion of the afterthoughts uh hope you enjoyed and we are here with the kaiju number eight portion of these afterthoughts and we'll begin with spoilers in three two, one, now. So, first off, there was a post credit scene. I, I didn't know that was going to happen. I did not expect it. Um, but, like, right after I turned off the recording, it's like the, the end credits ended and it showed that. So, I, I want to go over that real quick. So, in the post credit scene, it shows Mina thinking back to when her and um, Kafka were kids and he was encouraging her during the... Uh, study sessions they were having to become defense force members and then she got a call uh t telling her about the kaiju at the hospital you know kafka <laughs> and that she's gonna go take care of it so that leads into uh leads into next time i guess um so let's talk about this this was really good actually um, not that I didn't expect it to be, but I, I didn't really know what to expect. Because like I said, all I knew about this was uh, Kaiju um, and Adam MacArthur, basically. So, yeah. I, I, I really didn't have a lot to go off of. But now it's really good and i like seeing how um our main character is someone who wanted to be part of the defense force even tried to be but gave up part way through um it doesn't entirely explain why he gave up it's i guess just maybe like implied that he lost hope he lost faith in, in the fact in the idea that he could do it but nothing is ever actually directly stated on top of that you it, it is stated that uh, Mina is like better than him and everything she she like really got the hang of it I guess 
maybe he just felt like inferior compared to her and he he chickened out because of that um we also have ijikawa who is the new guy um just joined um while trying to get to the defense force he's also working with the um cleanup crew and that's adam MacArthur's character and it's a very different character than I, I normally see him play. Like, he, he seems to be a little more serious, a little more straight-laced, but does have a goofy side to him as well. Um, the characters, like I, I mentioned that I'm used to Adam MacArthur playing, are Marco Diaz from Star Wars The Force of Evil and Yuji Itadori from uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. Both characters are pretty wacky and silly. They have a lot of energy, they're very fun, they're goofy, and yeah, Yuji has moments of seriousness, of course, so does Marco. But generally speaking, they're more fun-loving, goofy guys. And this kind of seems to be more in the opposite direction, where he's like, he's, he's opening up and becoming a little more, you know, fun, but he starts off very seriously. And... I, I like the performance so far. Uh, I also like Kafka's voice actor. I think he really sells it. I, I, he definitely feels like he's a little bit older, um, but also still a bit of a, a goofball himself. Uh, I, I like the kaiju designs. They're very diverse and interesting. Uh, the, the one at the beginning is very classic kaiju while the second one we see that's chasing after kafka and you know that eventually mina and the tiger kill like that one is uh i guess you could say a little less standard kaiju because obviously when you think of kaiju you think of stuff like godzilla and gamera and whatnot uh those kinds of things king kong um, you don't usually think of whatever that was. <laughs> um, it, it, it's a lot of kaiju are a lot simpler in design, I guess you could say. That one was very, like, complex and weird. Um, a lot of kaiju also tend to look like animals. Like, you think of, like, Godzilla is a giant, like, dinosaur like lizard creature uh you have king Ghidorah, a three-headed dragon you have mothra which is literally just a giant moth king kong is literally a giant gorilla um stuff like that they're very simple they're, they're, there's not a lot to them even some of the weirder ones in in like the godzilla movies and stuff like Bialante, it, it it's just a giant plant it's a giant plant monster, but it's it's still pretty simple. And it's like, then you have, then you have uh, this, and it's just like there is a lot going on there. But then at the end, there's also a little bug thing. I mean, not little, but you know what I mean, comparatively, and. He calls it a kaiju as well, which means that kaiju are not just giant monsters in this universe. Because that's typically what a kaiju is. It is a giant monster. That's why in all these kaiju movies, you see, they are giant. And so it's interesting that it's, it's, I guess in this world, it's just like these unidentified, unquantifiable monsters not necessarily giant we see this little bug thing which is called a kaiju and now uh kafka becomes a kaiju but it he's still his normal size so it's it's a very odd uh change and not a bad change just odd just unusual I wonder how he's going to convince others um, of the fact that it's him, though. Like, especially Mina. Because, like, they're childhood friends and everything. Like, I I'm sure he could, like, find a way to say something that only they would know about. 
maybe their promise and everything and talking about the cat. But, like, other than that, I don't know. I, I don't know, like, how he's going to convince her because, like, she very much seems to have this all kaiju must die attitude and seems very serious about it. So I'm I'm wondering how that's going to go and what her reaction will be once she does realize that it is actually him. Um I guess maybe we'll find that out in episode 2. But yeah, this was this was really good actually. Like I said, the, the visuals were good, um the the soundtrack was good. Also freaking One Republic. What the fuck? Like, okay, was not expecting that, but all right. I like One Republic. And I've heard various other anime that have had American or, you know, just English-speaking bands. Um, because, like, um, oh, what is it called? Eden of the East has Oasis. And, I mean, they're not American. They're, uh, I think they're British. I think it, I think they're British. But yeah, they're still English speaking and they do the theme song for Eden of the East and it's in full English and everything. So it's not the first time this kind of thing has happened. It's just, I was not expecting it. And I'm listening, I'm listening to that in the afterthoughts, just trying to think of who it is. It's like, cause I'm like, I recognize that voice. I very much do. And I just couldn't place it. That's really funny though, that it's one Republic. Um, yeah, this this was a strong start and I think this is I think this is one that I definitely want to continue. Um I'm not like in the biggest rush to get to more of it, but it it definitely makes me want to see more. So whenever I I'll put this on the list like everything else and whenever I feel like I'm ready to get to this kind of thing, we can get to it. Um, just as we typically do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, tell me in the comments below, what did you think of this first episode of Kaiju number eight? And we are going to move on to the final thoughts of this video. Uh, so if you are just here for this, hope you enjoyed. If you wanted to check out Spice and Wolf as well, that's also on the video. Uh, but yeah. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and let's move on to the final afterthoughts. Okay, and so final afterthoughts for this uh, First Impressions showdown. Uh, both of these ended up being really good. I, I really enjoyed uh, the first episodes of both of these, but for different reasons and in different ways. So we are going to be continuing with reactions to both of them, probably at very different times, though. Um... Uh, if you want more details on my thoughts on them, obviously you can go back and check out the individual afterthoughts for each one. But yeah, I enjoyed this. I think this was a very successful First impression Showdown, and I'm glad I checked both of these out. So, uh, that being said, like I said before, uh, if you have any thoughts on either of these shows, um, please leave them down in the comments below. No spoilers, like even with Spice and Wolf, which again, I have seen the original series of, no spoilers, um, just because I haven't seen it in a long time and I don't remember everything. I kind of want to re-experience it, you know, with this series. So just no spoilers, cross the board. But leave your thoughts down in the comments below. And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. So thank you all so much for tuning in. And I'll see y'all next time.